Jeez. Live, coming to you live from across the state of West Australia. Well, I'm Matt, here. that's that sound about. <laughs> Uh, I'm uh, actually on the road traveling uh, up here in Geraldton, West Australia today while I've left, I'm not sure, carelessly left Lisa alone in Circle Leadership Studios. <laughs> God knows what's happening while I'm away. Um, what I don't know won't hurt me, apparently. So, I have a yeah. flower. Nice. <laughs> in your memory. Uh, so, this, uh, so this is interesting, actually. What a, what a wonderful segue, as we usually find in our conversations that... Um, I'm stepping way outside my comfort zone and going out of my studio here. Not me being out of the studio isn't out of my comfort zone, but leaving you alone in it. <laughs> Look, I would be concerned too. I am slightly concerned. I was turning the lamps on this morning. I'm like, it's okay. Don't touch the thing. Don't trip over the cords. Look, I'm not going to lie. I might have accidentally um, done something with the desk yesterday, but but it's fine. It's sorted. It's absolutely, yeah, we're good. Okay. That's, uh, that's the main thing, as long as we're good. Anyway, so we're here, we're live. Um, this uh, this is a follow-on from last week's live session. So uh, as you remember last week, uh, we, we did a, a really, uh, it was really a soulful session, I would call it. Yeah. Um, you know, like, and it was really, you know, talking about, you know, ourselves and, uh, and you know, some things that we've been through and some challenges and how we deal with them. Um, and Following on from that session uh, today, we're going to talk about self-image and comfort zones. And uh, what I want to be able to share with people is, you know, what is self-image, um, and you know, why is that important to us? Um, and uh, comfort zones. And instead of, uh, I want to put a new spin, if you wish, on how we think about comfort zones, because I think uh, comfort zones are great because, as they are, that's where you're comfortable, most comfortable, and you perform your best in your comfort zone. But it's not where you become your best. You perform your best in your comfort zone, but you don't become your best in your comfort zone. You become your best technically, as they would tell you, um, all change and all the, the, you know, the growth happens outside your comfort zone. But you know, and I know Lisa, and as many people who might be watching this understand as well, is it be scary when you step outside your comfort zone? Like when you think about it in life, the number of times that you've stepped outside your comfort zone, um, and, and this is kind of what happens is, is like, okay, um, you know, if I want this thing, I want that next promotion, uh, or I want this next, you yeah, actually was talking to our daughter about this last night here in Geraldton and, uh, about, you know, when they offered her the job, uh, her new promotion at her workplace to become the assistant manager of the store that she's, uh, now assistant manager for, um, she said, because she understands, um, she said at first she felt like, oh, I don't know if I'm ready for that yet. And, da, 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 and you know, it's a bit of a leap and. Um, and then, of course, she was fortunate enough to know, understand the self-image, and because she used to teach this stuff to um, younger kids um, when she was fifteen, um, and you know, helping with their self-image and self-esteem, and, and that. And she said, "No, Dad, I just realized, like, you know what? Um, I've been stretching and pushing um, who I am as a person, and it wasn't a massive leap as I thought it initially it might be for me. Um, and I was able to, and I just said yes, and I said I'll learn as I go." Um, and so she took the role, whereas someone else in her life was offered an opportunity that they always wanted, but it seemed like a big leap and they weren't ready yet. So they didn't want to take the leap. So, you know, because that would take them way outside their comfort zone. Mm. Uh, so, so I always look at this uh, when people talk about, you know, like motivation, all that. I call what I call the motivation channel, um, if you wish. So if you imagine just on a simple graph where you have uh, goals that are really massive, Right, and they're so big. You know those goals that you set that are so big that like you're deer in the headlights when you think about them. The big, and, quite audacious ones. Yeah, well, even yeah, not, not even even beyond audacious ones, like where people actually just sit there, they're totally unrealistic. You never fathom ever in your in your mind that you would be the person to be able to achieve them. Um, yeah. Get the goal, you know, but I want that, and so I'll set my goal for that. But it's so big, you you you, you don't do anything because you don't know where to start, or your fear overcomes you, and things like that. And then other people set some goals that are really small. Um, and they're so small that there's no energy in them. Right? So there's no motivation. It's so easy to do that I just don't do it. Mm. So what I call motivation channel is, is about setting goals. And, and the only way I can describe this to people, and I've, I've not found a better way yet, is when it makes your blood bubble. You know, when you, like what I call nervous excitement or nervous anxiousness, but it's this energy that all of a sudden, when you think about the goal, it's 
you know, just outside your reach. But you know, if you if I stretch myself, I could I could reach out and I could I could probably grab, it, right? Mm. You know, as a PT, it's the same thing when you're sitting there and you know, like I think I've like I've done my ten reps and you're thinking, no, nah, Dave, come on, you've got you've got you know three more and I'm going, I don't three more and you go, yes, you do, and like I'm pushing and pushing and you're forcing me to stretch beyond what I thought was capable. You're not saying do twenty more. You're just saying like do one or two more. Do that extra yeah. one. Do that extra two. Yeah. Do that extra three. Yeah. And push, push, push. Yeah. Um, and but if you said do an extra ten, my mind is go <laughs> and collapse. Like that's way too big. Right. So one is like, oh yeah, I can do one more. Um, but I wouldn't do one more unless you told me to do one more. Right. Uh, so as a PD and having that person there. So, but when when you're in that motivation channel, it's when you're blood's bubbling a little bit and your nervous anxiousness and it's just you know it's just outside your reach um and it's not so small that you go i could do that with me. you know small goals is no energy please people if you're listening to this small goals have no energy and there's no energy there's there's no um that's the e in emotion right emotion energy in motion there is no motion because there's no energy but like elastic band, if I take a rubber band and I just hold on to it, there's no energy in it, right? But if I just dangle an elastic band, there's, there's no energy yeah. in a rubber band. But then if I put the things and I stretch it, all of a sudden, there you go. It's so beautiful. If you stretch that out and you go, okay, now there's energy in that band, right? And we're going to talk more about the, the rubber band tomorrow. But if you stretch it too far, it'll snap, right? It'll snap. I just okay. got your face bang on the screen with that rubber okay. band then. <laughs> Bloody excellent. Yeah. Yeah, good one. Um, um, just we don't we get that violence on the show. Hey? We don't condone that kind of violence on our show. No, that's right. Speaking of um, non-violence on our show, I need to ask, have you got the mouse and are you able to um, do that? Oh, I do, yes. Excellent. Hi, Gary. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for joining. <laughs> this is what happens when we leave Dave in charge of the mouse clicks. Um, yes. But I'm not allowed to touch it. He's like, click this, 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 and this, but um, don't touch anything. I'm like, come on, man. Like, I'm yes. good. But <laughs> so, but yeah, so, there's, so it's about creating goals that are energy for you and ones that don't snap you um, or where there's no energy at all. Okay, mm -hmm. so when you're feeling this anxious energy, um, I, I'm going to, I'm going to do a bad job of this quote, but uh, I can't remember which person said it. Um, one of the famous philosophers, or whatever, said, um, um, "Far should uh, something exceed a man's reach, or else what's a heaven for?" You Can know, you like, say that again, please? Um, something about something exceeding your reach, else what's a heaven for? Right. So, like, it's what um, I thought. I wonder, I can't remember who said it, but it's a really powerful quote. But the thing is, it's. If it's, it's just outside your reach, otherwise, what's heaven for? Like, you have to have something that's just outside your reach, mm. right? Uh, and, and that's where I, I would like people to think about it with comfort zones. So getting back to the whole concept of a comfort zone. So if you set a goal this way to and you jump outside your comfort zone, we've, we've all done it in our lives. We've stepped way outside our comfort zone, and we're kind of like you're out there, you're alone, and all of a sudden, obviously, A, uncomfortable, but it, it's scary, right? So you feel fearful. And when the fear or the heat is on and you're outside your comfort zone, what's the first thing that you want to do? Run away, yes. stop, the next thing you want to do is you want to run back into your comfort zone where it's safe again. Um, and uh, and I talked about this in my article, I think, a little bit, but it's what I call uh, self-conscious or subconscious sabotage. Have you ever seen people promoted beyond their means or their belief? And they mm. do stupid things and then they either get demoted or leave. Or you see somebody get something that's far greater than they ever thought that they could, and they subconsciously sabotage themselves because they don't think they deserve it, and they do stupid things. Like in a relationship, they have somebody who they think is too good for them, and they do things to prove themselves right and go back to their comfort zone. Even mm. that comfort zone is misery. Yeah, because better the devil you know than the devil you don't know. And Gay Hendricks talks about this in his book, The Big Leap. Um, like yes, absolutely. Absolutely ceilinging yourself um yeah. where things are going so great then you're like the whole too good to be true and like you talk about dave that if we have a belief about something then our brain's function is to keep us sane so it's like yeah. all right well if this is what you believe then we need to make this a reality so that we don't feel like a complete crazy 
And so, therefore, here you are. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 you know, we talk about when um, <laughs> this is why we help leaders to evolve themselves and their businesses to stay relevant, yeah. right? So yeah. an evolution is that steady, progressive increase of your capabilities and your capacity for greatness so that you yeah. don't step way outside your comfort zone. Because what a lot of, and when we, we talk about people growing out of business, what happens is <clears throat> if the leader does not evolve and they stay here and then their team get to the stage where they reach a spot where they can't go any further because the, the leader hasn't evolved and created the space and capacity for the team to continue to evolve. Yeah. So when that happens, um, what well, either the good people end up leaving the organization or the organization implodes. Mm. That's pushing down on the detonator because actually what happens is or the organization gets bigger than the leader and then the organization pushes down on the leader because yeah. this is where people's businesses got so big and then it just crumbled all around them because they the business got bigger than they were. Yeah. Okay. And when we focus on growth only, you grow and you get this massive business and then all that growth comes on top of you because you haven't evolved and then it pushes down on you just like a plunger and explodes and blows up your business. Mm. Right. So, so that kind of sucks. So comfort zone is great. It's where you perform your best. It's where you're in flow state and everything's awesome, but you don't um, grow or evolve in your comfort zone. Mm. Right. So if I want to achieve greater things in my life, then how the heck do I do that? Lisa? If every time I step outside my comfort zone, first time the heat's on, I want to come back in or I'll do stupid things to bring myself back to where I am. Mm. Kind of so mm. what I want to, be able to share with people today is, uh, you know, we've done talk about before the process of human behavior. So what if I show you the process of human behavior laid over self-image and how to, instead of what I call uh, stepping outside your comfort zone, what if we expand and stretch our comfort zone? Mm. Actually, because this is where, I, like, um, this is where evolution is different to growth. Growth is like you get out there and you do stuff and whatever, and you try to be more, whereas evolution is about becoming more. So I'm going to share with you on the whiteboard in just a moment how to stretch and push the boundaries of your comfort zone mm -hmm. so much so that you actually bring your goals into your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. you're actually stretching and expanding your comfort zone rather than having to step outside your comfort zone. Yeah, and I was just thinking about, like, as a baby's growing, yep. it's it's expanding um, its comfort zone inside its mother's tummy, right? Like yeah. it's not busting itself out of out of the tummy at like three or four months. It's expanding that space, and and so is the creation of ourselves and of our business. It's yep. it's all growing and expanding where we are, so that we're becoming more in that process. So I, you know, how I love that process for human behavior, Dave. I'm really juiced to see how you're going to lay that over the top because it's like two of my favorite things come together. So let's do the thing. Okay. So let's That's do the thing. Let's hope, let's hope. So just so people understand, we are. Uh, I'm here at Geraldton, whiteboarding from Geraldton into the studio in in Perth. So, <laughs> so we're hoping that this is going to work. Uh, all right. So there's this. Okay. All right. So here we go. So please excuse the crudity of my artwork, but this this is let's just call this the. Uh, picture of you this is all about self-image here right so let's go here van so, gogh exhibition eat your heart out i reckon um my, my my pen is doing its thing again is it it's yeah we're making you write like an like an artist too all right so this is our self-image now uh, this is a picture so imagine that's a picture frame around you and in this picture frame here we have our fears our doubts our worries our values our beliefs all this stuff framed up in this picture of ourselves, all right? There's a picture frame around us. And this is a wonderful picture of me. Now, uh, these little negative uh, bits up here in the, in the, in the headspace here, they're not necessarily negative, but these are what I call our limiting beliefs, okay? So we know that the process for human behavior is success, right? However you choose to define that, comes from your results. It's not gonna let me draw properly, is it? No. Results. You're, you're from yeah, so it comes from your behavior, um, and our behavior comes from our attitudes, how we think, and those things have been conditioned into us through a process of spaced repetition of a bunch of inputs. Mm -hmm. So I've, 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 these inputs repetitively have that supposed to be a C in there, conditioned the way I think about things, causing me to behave the way I do, getting the results and success I may or may not be enjoying in my life right now. Uh -huh. Now, 
with this process. So this is that's process for human behavior. Now, what does that look like in context of here? So if I've set myself a massive new picture of success in my life and I've set these goals that I'd like to accomplish. Right, I've got these goals I want to accomplish. Um, and then I take a step outside my comfort zone. Yay. And the first thing I'm going to do when the heat's on is go, no, nay. All right. But what if we use this process for human behavior and in our terms of our self-image? We said, okay, well, hang on. I've set myself to success. And if I actually take this and I go, okay, here's what it looks like. Here's the goals. Here's the behaviors that I would need to demonstrate. Here's the thinking that would be required. And I put that down here at the new inputs. And then I said, okay, hang on, I'm going to, it's like me to, and one plus. And then I step out with the right behavior. And then I just slowly but surely start to push a little edge of my comfort zone. And then I do it again. And I go, well, hang on a second. It's really like me to do that, another plus. And then I step out again with action and just push a little. And then I do the same thing again and plus. And then I step out. And I do the same thing again and again and step out and step out. And then what that ends up happening is the boundaries or edges of my comfort zone start to stretch. Right? So much so that if I keep repeating this process, that all of a sudden I make my comfort zone so much bigger that it all fits inside. So the process for human behavior, this is how we expand our self-image, is the same thing. It's using that. So if I define all the things that success looks like, what my results are, and the behaviors I would need to demonstrate and the thinking I would have, I use those as a new input. And every time I say, okay, hey, it's likely to do this. So I was with Corey this morning here, and he came uh, out of the room. We're staying in the hotel here together, um, out of his room, and I'm sitting there doing my morning mantra, right? My, writing my thing uh, every, that I do every morning. And he goes, oh, what are you doing, Dave? I said, oh, I'm just writing out the rest of my stuff. I've done my affirmations. I'm just writing out my thing every day. So every day I'm affirming who I am, how I see myself, the world that I see, the work that I do. And then every day I step out with that and expand to become the leader that I need to become to lead a global organization. Uh, and then I'm just keep stretching and pushing and nudging the edges of my comfort zone. Mm. And this is how we expand our comfort zones instead of actually just going making some giant ass leap way outside here and going, yay, I want to be this. We actually, it's a steady, progressive increase of your capabilities and your capacity for greatness is we just keep nudging the edges and the boundaries. Okay. All evolution happens at the edge of our comfort zones. And yeah, every time we the edge, yeah. Um, every, and so Gary, uh, I call it uh, stale culture. When you stop learning, you start dying. 100% Gary, the day you start, stop learning is the day you start dying for sure. The, um, mm. And the, this is the process for that. So when you go through this here, Please understand, this is how you learn to walk, talk, ride a bike, drive a car, that whole process of human behavior. But when you look at it, how you see yourself, because if you do not see yourself being the person who achieved this level of success, then you're never going to achieve that level of success, because seeing is believing. So how do you, what if you build this belief in you that it's like you to be that person who does the things to achieve the things? And this is where... Um, you know, we, the people talk a lot about, you know, the fake it till you make it people, that wonderful fake it till you make it crowd. The fake it till you make it people are the ones who stand up way out over here and lean against the Ferrari and say, send me 50 bucks and I'll show you how to how to earn this Ferrari that I have here. Right? What we're, the, the difference between fake it till you make it is this is actually acting as if it's already true. It's about bringing this belief into reality. If I've identified this is what success looks like for me in my life and the the goals and results I want to achieve and the behaviors and how I need to think. And every day I take action towards that. And I like I think positively about that and then put this through affirmation and belief about who I am and what I'm capable of and take simple steps out with that. I will push the boundaries of my comfort zone. And I'm starting to act in accordance with the new truth that I've decided to have as the input for me. I'm not trying to fake anything. I'm acting in accordance with the new truth as I perceive it and believe it to be about who I am and what I'm capable of and achieving in my life and in this world. Right? So please understand that you do not need to fake it till you make it. You just need to start acting as if you're already the person that you choose to become. And and that's just the process. And can I just um, jump in there as well, Dave? If 
I, I love this. It's just the little nudge. It's it's the next yeah. step, the next step, the next step. If we're running a hundred meters, we're not trying to jump from the start line to the finish line. It's the next step. And you hear, and you know, maybe there's merit in it. And you hear people saying, just go all in, burn your bridges, give yourself no no um, leeway, so that you have to show up you have to be successful because your life and your family's welfare and all of that kind of stuff depends and it put yourself in the hurt locker so that you absolutely have to show up and do the thing but but one of the six human needs not one of the six human preferences one of the six human needs is certainty so mm. if we rip ourselves out of all of the certainty in our comfort zone and throw ourselves so far away from that and burn all of the bridges saying, oh, no, I'm just putting myself in a position where I have to show up, then what creativity flows from there? What love can you speak to the market? Because you're freaking out. You're like, mm. my house is on the line. What what meal is my kids going to eat? And, and how can we evolve? How can we be innovative? What space do we have to think and to flow in order to evolve ourselves and our businesses to stay relevant from that space. So so by nudging this and going one step at a time, it gives us an opportunity to make sure that our, our human need of certainty in our comfort zone is met. We know that we're okay. So that we've got space to perform really well, but also nudge ourselves in and step and stretch into that that's next becoming. What did we call it the other day? Our levolution, our, yeah. our level leveling up our evolution um yes. so i i love that little nudge i love a love nudge and um i know for me when i've you know burnt bridges and put myself I've, it, it, that's what happens you put yourself in overwhelm in in yeah. like you're in the headlights and you're like and now nothing is happening nothing is happening yeah. and you implode yeah and I, I think people take that burning the bridges concept out of out of context like for me when i decided that um I'm never going to like have a job again and that I'm going to build this organization and stuff. And so I've like burnt the bridges, you know, I'm going to win the war or die here trying if you can. like, and that's fine, but that's, I don't apply that same theory to, in terms of who I need to become. I understand that in order to do that, I needed to constantly be evolving myself. And mm -hmm. please, if you're watching this or listening to this now or later, that, um, growth is great. We're not we're not anti-growth people. What we're saying is that evolution needs to become your natural state of yourself and your business, where you mm -hmm. can have growth spurts within that. Which is why we talk about a steady, progressive increase of your capabilities and your capacity for greatness. Mm -hmm. So the more you increase your capabilities steadily and progressively, you'll be able to increase your capacity for greatness. And by doing so, you'll have those growth spurts on the back of a core of evolution about how you evolve as a leader, evolve as a person, mm -hmm. um, and then. And understanding then, the same thing is uh, in that self-image is then how you see yourself. If you steadily, progressively increase how you see yourself, rather than trying to go, I see myself as this rock god now, and I'm not now, and then I try to act like one, um, and try to fake it, pretend like, uh, it's not going to happen because it's just going to fall apart around you. But if you I can't get there. No. So this is where... Um, you don't, you know, I appreciate the, the, the concept of all growth happens out, outside of your comfort zone. Great. But evolution is pushing the boundaries of your comfort zone constantly, steadily and progressively, so much so that you bring your goals into your comfort zone mm. by expanding it around them, not having to step outside of it. So when you, you know, like, well, that's way too uncomfortable for me. Okay, well, what, what is comfortable? Well, push. What's that, that whole little bit of a nudge all the time? And, and yes. that's, this is this is how we work in terms of our clients. This is how we work. This this is the same development process that I worked with you on, for you as you as you became part of the organization and are evolved. Just constantly nudging, 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 steadily, progressively increasing your capabilities, increasing how you see yourself, and what you're capable of. Right? Because that this is this is my self image, how I see myself. So if I see myself, any of you there are solopreneurs or entrepreneurs or. Um, you know, have a, you're, you're the independent person who runs your home business, but you visualize having this massive organization one day, well, then you need to start to see, uh, you know, whatever success looks like, what were the results of that, what behaviors would you demonstrate if you were that kind of leader, what attitude would you have? It's the same process that I went through from going from five years ago as a you know, solo entrepreneur to building an organization um, that is now global. Mm. Right? And then I'm looking at, well, then who do I need to be, to be leading that organization? And um, and constantly nudging and pushing my boundaries. 
And that yeah. nudge is getting a little bit stronger at the moment, is it not? It's like, yeah. all right, it's it's nudging and we've got to step up. And and this is the thing, folks. We're, we're not saying don't, we're not saying stay in your comfort zone. The nudge is what's key here. Because if you stay in your comfort zone and there's no nudging of the edges and you stay there, nothing's doing. That's called atrophying. And, you know, the only thing that's good of it, if it ferments and, and goes stale is, is wine. But even then at, at such time, it, it, it's not a great time. So it's, yeah, the, all magic happens outside of your comfort zone. And the key is in the nud, but also just staying inside your comfort zones and well inside of the boundaries of that as well. That's, that's not, you're not evolving from that space. So no, the, the nudge is what's key here, not not ripping yourself out of the comfort zone into something that's way too overwhelming, um, but it's it's the nudge that's key. It's not just please please do hear us when we're saying. Then it's it's the nudge piece, not the just stay there and rest on your laurels and be like, oh no, I'm just going to stay stay here. Mm. Right. So let me just share one more thing with you. Like you know you know at Circle Leadership, we love to work with complex models, right? Because you're such an amazing artist. Yeah, I'm trying to figure if I just write a little bit slower. It allows me to not write like a like Picasso. <laughs> so here's here's a transformation model. So if you want to draw this yourself, like this is this is as complicated as it gets. So this is you down the bottom here as you currently are, and this is the future you who you want to become. Here's here's and say in the next and this is the way we work with people. Um, so Gary said a really great comment here. Everyone's comfort zone and challenge zone is different, but most comfortable being slightly on the edge. What's funner, a roller coaster or a lazy river? Ah, oh, love that, Gary. Yes. Yeah, hundred percent, Gary. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, sometimes a lazy river is not bad. It's just nice to relax. But you know, that's maybe after you've done a whole bunch of crazy uh, roller coasters, and then uh, a little bit of lazy river is just a nice. So here, here, here's this complex model. So if this down the bottom here is, is currently you, and then up the top here is future you, here's, and yeah. just say, and this is what we do every, for us, every every year we set a theme, right? So Lisa and I, we set a theme for ourselves every year um, about who, part of our, like our theme for our evolution, uh, an overarching theme that we apply to all areas of our lives, right? So it's part of our constant evolution. Uh, and so for me, as where I was uh, 12, at the beginning of this year, for example, uh, I would sit there and go, okay, so what is, I'm going to currently, like 98% of the things I do is probably still going to be the same me. But the 2%, what's one thing I could start doing this month that would move me closer to the future me? And the next month, what's the next thing? What's the next thing that I could do? And then the next month, what's the next thing? And the next thing, and the next thing, and the next thing, and the next thing. So eventually, by in the next 12 months, if not 98% or 100% of me, I'm now the future me. Because all I did is one thing well at a time, steady, progressive increase of my capabilities and my capacity for greatness. So my capacity for greatness as the new me expanded as I step-by-step step increased my capabilities. Mm. So people think it's not like stop, it's not like to stop doing this, then start doing this. It's mm. what's one thing I can start doing this month that would move me towards future me. What's the next thing I can do? What's the next thing after that? Because the fastest way to get many things done is to do one well at a time. And so for me, this is this this is the way I work on my own evolution. This is the way we work with our clients. What's step one? What's step two? What's step three? And then before you know it, actually, what ends up happening is this curve actually in a lot of cases ends up accelerating. Mm. Right. So it's really important to understand. Like it doesn't. It's not a complex process. But if you don't follow the process, you're going to leap way outside your comfort zone. You're going to be scared shitless, and you'll fall off the roller coaster. Yep, and this is our thing. The roller coaster, you'll try to rip the, like, get me off of this thing, right? Because yep. you're just scared. Um, and I see this time and time again in the fitness profession where people go from from eating absolute crap and doing no movement whatsoever to training yes. three hours a day and living on broccoli and air for eight weeks getting a result but as you go from one it's and as a scorpio i'm really good at this as you go from one extreme to the other for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction right so then yeah. 
you've gone here, you've gone here, you've gone here, you've gone here, and this is where yo-yo dieting happens because we're ripping ourselves from one extreme to the other, and no long-term sustainable good comes from that. I know because I lost and put on 40 kilos three times by doing this, right? Yep. And it's only when I change the thing, change the thing, change the thing, change the thing, that now I get to eat cake for breakfast and be fit, healthy and strong for the lifetime because of that little progressive, steady improvement. But we live in this, we live in an instant gratification culture. It's like, yep. you know, I spent 30 years being 30 kilos overweight and now I want to be 30 kilos lighter in three days. We just can't yep. get that from there, folks. It just doesn't yep. happen. So I said, I didn't get this away from eating one donut, right? The, uh, yeah. yeah. And, and just wrapping up on that, and so to Gary's point, yes, Kaizen will simplicity. Once again, that's one of our uh, core values here at Circle Leadership, which is freedom from complexity, is, you know, simple things, one step at a time, um, and you'll achieve so much. If you just did one new thing every day, you'd do 365 new things in a, in a year, rather than trying to do 365 new things in one day. Um, mm -hmm. and, this is okay. and your gym example is perfect, and I'll, I'll just wrap up on that, because a lot of people do, they go from not working at all and go, okay, I'm going to go an hour a day, five days a week. And they get to about day three, and their body is so sore and so painful that they go, I can't do it. And then so they actually go, I'm not going back. And you go from zero to hero, it doesn't work. Uh, nope. How many people, and the statistically it's been shown, that people who win the big lotteries, the 70% of them are actually worse off three years later than they were before they won the money. Same Why? story. Because <clears throat> winning the lottery doesn't make you success. You can't win success. Okay? So, you you know, if you see yourself being the type of person who has that level of wealth and is, that's the thing. Well, then those are the people who are going to get, and that's why they help so many of the lottery winners these days because it's uh, all that money just gets washed away, right? So, um, Because if you don't you have capacity to yeah. hold that, yeah. then you can't. That's right. Period. Right. So, so everyone, uh, thank you and much for tuning in here. Gary, thank you once again for all your, your comments and contributions to, the, to our live stream. Uh, <clears throat> please remember, you don't need to leap outside your comfort zone. You need to step onto the edge of your comfort zone and keep pushing and nudging the boundaries of your comfort zone. And if you constantly nudge and push the edges and boundaries of your comfort zone, you will bring your goals into reality. You will start acting as if you are that person who does it. You don't need to fake it until you make it. You don't need to do any of that stuff. You don't need to get scared. You don't need to be deer in the headlights. And you don't need to set goals that are so small that you're never going to take action anyway. You just create enough energy because this is when you stretch and you just create enough energy that you have. And we're going to talk about elastic band theory next week when we talk about how your mind works. So we're going to talk about actually how to take that and look at your self-image and your comfort zones and how to use your brain as the greatest tool to help you achieve all the things that you want in life, where it's actually sabotaging you and where it's helping you succeed. Love that. Mm. Yeah. This so, is my jam cake. <laughs> yes. Well, until next week, although we might be doing it at a slightly different time because I will be possibly sitting in Sydney Airport at the time while I'm doing that. Love that. I'll be so, here. So stay tuned. Uh, and, yes, we'll let you know what time it will be uh, posted up. But thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Really appreciate uh, and value your time and attention. Um, if you want, we have a worksheet that uh, demonstrates that model I showed you with the, the comfort zones. Uh, hashtag self-image in the comments. Dave, write hashtag self-image in the comments because Lisa's not going to do it because you're in control of the mouse. It's not allowed to touch things, man. Come on. There okay, it so is. Self-image if you want the worksheet. Um, we'll send it to you. Get to the Make sure you get a copy of it. Um, yeah. Sorry? you got to click Hold on it so it comes on the screen. Okay, yeah. One job, man. Yeah, you're going to be in control of the mouse. <laughs> All right, guys, until uh, next week, um, live from Sydney and WA and wherever else we'll be in the world. Um, I'll just be coming back to New Zealand, so uh, I'll be very excited to, to share with some thoughts around that, but I'm really pumped about showing you how your brain works, pull all this sort of stuff together now. Uh, thanks Absolutely. again, everyone, and we'll see you next week. Bye.